Today we're going to be making Monster Mud. Now Monster Mud is the process of mixing several ingredients to create a mixture that when applied on any surface turns it into a stone-like or concrete-like finish. I'll be showing you four different ingredients and four different ways to make Monster Mud. We're going to see which one works best. This recipe is a must-have for any Halloween DIYer, so let's get started. Today's tutorial is going to be on Monster Mud. Now, Halloween lovers such as myself love working with Monster Mud. It turns any object into a stone-like or cement-like feature. It feels like stone, it looks like cement. It's really awesome when you want to turn something into a statue. So, there's a classic recipe that involves using joint compound and exterior grade paint. But, I fiddled with a few recipes and today I'm bringing you four recipes on Monster Mud. At the end, we're going to try them out to see which one's best, which one's worse, and maybe if we find a new one that we love. So let's get started with our Monster Mud tutorial. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's rated for kids ages 2 to 6 years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written, and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. Now that we're done mixing it, remember you want the consistency to be that of a thick soup or applesauce. I think that's a better description for this. So now we have our drop cloth. All of these have been cut to the same size. What we're going to do is we're going to get our brush first and then brush in this mixture all along the front and on the head of this styrofoam prop. And next, we're going to get our canvas drop cloth that we cut up and we're going to submerge it completely into the mixture. So you want to make sure that the mixture gets on all the surfaces of this. Monster Mud is super messy, so make sure you're working in an area where it's covered or maybe outside, you have a tarp down, because it really does get messy. We're just rolling it around like this. Normally, we would be using a five gallon bucket if we wanted to do a big creature or a big statue because you have to dip the fabric or the cloth into this mixture. So once we're done mixing it, it should be covered completely. And then we're simply going to place it on top of her, just like so. So I think I like it like that. And we're done with the first one. So let's move, clean up this area first and move on to the second Monster Mud recipe. can see it's rather dark the paint it's a dark gray you can go with any style color you want any light shade of gray any dark shade of gray so this is the paint that I had lying around just make sure it's exterior grade paint and we're good to go so you can see really quickly what I'm doing I'm simply just lathering it completely if you have excess monster mod you can easily just wring it out like this but normally when I make mine I just leave the excess on it and now we can put the cloth over it. Also, just a tip 
If your mixture, whichever one you decide to use, is too thick, it's perfectly fine to add more paint or more joint compound, but normally we just stick to paint. That way it's easier to work with. There's no perfect recipe. You don't have to follow the measurements to the T. Also remember, if you're making a big statue or a big monster or coating something big, your proportions need to be much bigger than this because the cloth normally absorbs so much of it. So when I did my seven foot tall Grim Reapers, I had to use a five gallon bucket to mix everything. And I think I used two tubs of um, drywall joint compounds and three quarters of a gallon of paint, I think more. So yeah, be prepared to make them in big batches when you're ready to do this. Repeat the step. And the last recipe we've made is the classic Monster Mud, which is joint compound and exterior latex paint. So let's see how she turns out. And now that all the Monster Mud has been placed, we're gonna wait 24 hours to ensure everything dries and everything is solid. So let's see how it looks like tomorrow. I can't wait. 24 hours later. As you can see, they're all really solid and some of them look a little bit different. So now we're going to look up close and compare them to the others to see what we like and what we don't like. So we're going to start off first with this one, which used cement. I don't really particularly like this look because of the little stones and pebbles on the inside. It gives it a really rough texture, but I could see this working on something like a gravestone. But now let's look at the actual fabric and how it did. It's just a little bit too rough for a statue. But like I said, you could use it on other applications like a gravestone. But now we're gonna go to the actual fabric. And if we push on the fabric, it actually gives way. It's not a completely solid structure. So it is, it is hard, but as you can see, I can easily turn it like this. I can lift up these pieces over here I can squeeze it like this. So it kind of has a rubbery like feel to it. So I'm gonna say that this is a fail. This, is, this does not work out the way we wanted it to work out. For our next Monster Mud, we used vinyl spackle and exterior paint. Now with this one, it's much harder than the cement one was, but it still has some give to it as you can see right here in these parts. The other parts of it are pretty solid, but like I said, the edges, they give a little bit. It's a little bit crunchy. Not the kind of consistency we're looking for when something is monster mudded like this. So better than the cement one, but not a complete fan of it. Overall, not a fan of the vinyl and exterior paint spackle. It's good, but not great. Here we have what I think is my favorite. We used joint compound, dry lock, and exterior grade paint. When you push in the edges, they don't give way. The entire thing is very solid, very statuesque. I love how it came out. I love that it's not gritty like the cement. It's very nice and smooth. This one is definitely a winner, and the dry lock being a waterproofer would be great for the outdoors. So I absolutely love how this one came out. Last but certainly not least, we have the classic Monster Mud recipe, which involves joint compound and exterior grade paint. This one as well, like the previous one, is solid. There's a slight give when we press in the edges, ever so slightly, nothing major, but this is the classic recipe. It's solid, it's smooth, it came out really, really nicely. It's one solid piece, so you can't go wrong with the classic recipe. So when it comes down to it, one was not so good. Number two is all right. There's some give to the fabric. Now, number three, I think this is the clear winner. Hooray! Very solid structure. Everything's super smooth. None of the edges give way. Loved number three. And number four is the classic Monster Mud recipe. 
that I think it almost tied for first, but I would have to give it a second place. There's a slight give to it, but not that much. So either three or number four would be excellent choices for your Monster Mud creations. So now that we know that number three is the winner and number four is close second, we're going to dip our two best ones in a bucket of water. We're going to submerge them completely in a five gallon bucket of water, after which we'll put them back up here to see how they fare. My issue with monster mud recipes in the past is that it gets soft when it rains. So I'm trying to see if adding the dry lock to the monster mud actually improved the ability to remain weatherproof. So right off the bat, we can see how number four, which is the classic monster mud recipe, it's softened. And this is what always happens to me when it rains. It's not completely uh, soft. It's still hard, but look how it moves. It moves in some areas. The edges are soft again, and it feels wet. Nothing's coming off though. I'm, I'm rubbing my finger on it and I don't see anything, but this is the classic recipe. Now, when we move over to the dry lock, look at this. There is some give to it. There is slight give on the edges, but the structure itself feels harder. See, there's give here, there's give there. But the difference is that this one, this one can move like that. It's like leathery. And this one, it's like, it's good. And this is my favorite. So using dry lock actually helps maintain the sturdiness, the stiffness of this in rainy conditions. So absolutely amazing. I have found my new way to make monster mud and it's definitely using dry lock. Like just look at that.